Welcome to chapters two and three of your online World Regional Geography course. I would really like to take this opportunity to introduce these two chapters to you by pointing out some of the key points and concepts that you'll be learning about and to really try to help bring it all back in together. So chapter two is really the summary of Europe while chapter three is looking more at Russia. So let's start with chapter two. Now the European continent extends from the North Atlantic Ocean to the Ural Mountains in Russia. Europe is bordered by the Arctic Ocean to the north, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, and the Mediterranean Sea to the south. The Gulf Stream helps create a sea climate for much of Western Europe. When I think of sea climates, I think of mostly Southern California. Uh, sea is more Mediterranean, uh, so that's kind of the, my mindset with those letters. Uh, type D climates dominate the north and eastern portions of Eastern Europe. When I think of D type climates, I think of D as in Delaware. Uh, mostly because D climates experience, really do experience all four seasons, but they also get incredibly frigid or cold. So then moving forward, uh, Europe has four main physical landforms that provide a diversity of resources for human activity. European colonialism brought increased wealth and economic activity to Western Europe. The Industrial Revolution also began here. Europe developed into an industrialized realm with powerful economic forces that continue to drive the post-industrial engine of globalization. Rural to urban shift and urbanization were products of industrialization. The result for Europe has been smaller families but higher incomes. Going way back, the Roman Empire created early networks of infrastructure for southern Europe, while the Vikings connected northern Europe through trade and warfare. The last attempt to unify the European nations is through the supranationalism and the formation of the European Union, the EU. Since the Soviet Union's collapse of 1991, Eastern Europe has been transitioning from communist governments to democratic governments with capitalist-style economies. Some countries have made this transition more easily than others. Many of the more progressive countries have been accepted into the European Union. Now, the breakup of former Yugoslavia is an excellent example of how cultural forces shape geographic areas. Now, moving into Chapter 3, which is Russia, we'll start with that. Russia is a large country that crosses the boundary between Europe and Asia. It has an abundant natural resources, continental and arctic climates, mountains, plains, and massive river systems. Russia's vast size has made it challenging to govern, both for the Russian Empire and for the Soviet Union. Each government dealt with the size and cultural diversity in different ways. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR, was founded through a violent rebellion and civil war. It was ruled by the Bolshevik Party and Socialist Group led by Vladimir Lenin. The second leader of the USSR, Joseph Stalin, was renowned for millions of people that he had killed as he consolidated his power and sought economic growth for his country. The USSR was a command economy in which economic decisions were made by a central state. Economic objectives of the early leaders included rapid industrialization and agriculture. The Soviet economy was ultimately corrupt and inefficient. Two factors, along with other problems, led to the unraveling of the Soviet Union in 1991. Since 1999, Russian's President Vladimir Putin and Dmitry Med Medvedev excuse me, uh, has strengthened Russia's economy and consolidated the power of the central state. Most Russians do live in the western part of the country, near Moscow, and other large population centers are also located in the country's European core. There are a few industrial cities in the eastern frontier region, but most of, uh, but most of Russia's east of the Urals is vast wilderness. I hope you enjoy working through these chapters. Please don't forget to take your reading quizzes, complete your discussion boards, and remember, with the reading quizzes, you do get two attempts, and Canvas will keep the highest out of the two events. As always, enjoy, and uh, we'll talk soon.